Hey, thanks for stopping by the YouTube channel. Do me a favor. While you're here, click on subscribe and click that bell so you'll get an email every time you've got a great interview like this one. Great radio stations across the land, JoePags.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email. It's all right there, plus the live video feed. It's the Joe Pags Show. Glad to have you here. Really glad to have this guy back. Friend of mine, author, movie maker, generally a smart dude. It is uh, Dinesh D'Souza. Dinesh, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's always an absolute pleasure to have you back. United States of Socialism is the new book. It's out tomorrow. Now, I don't know how much you stalk my my Twitter feed. Uh, I know that you share a lot of my stuff. I share a lot of your stuff, and I appreciate that. But anytime somebody comes at me about the big switch and about you know the history of the Republican Party and the KKK and segregation and Jim Crow, I always correct them first with facts I got from you. Then I say... You should watch a Dinesh D'Souza movie or read a Dinesh D'Souza book. And, and and their response is either, you know, something indignant like, oh, that guy's a no good felon, whatever. But if they actually read what you do and watch what you do, they'll get an education like I received. And I considered myself pretty smart before, you know, checking out your work. But you you set it out so clearly and so absolutely factually correct that it's above reproach and it's got to feel good. Dinesh, do you think enough people know our real history in this country? Because what we're seeing in the past week shows me that they don't know the history. They don't. And the reason they don't, uh, and in some ways it's not their fault, because what's happened is that we've got um, misinformation embedded in multiple places. Uh, so, for example, take the idea that sort of fascism is on the right. Uh, you'll find that on the History Channel. You'll find it on Wikipedia. You'll find it in a textbook. You'll find it uh, in a popular book. So the ordinary guy goes, well, wow. I mean, it must be true because I see it confirmed over here and confirmed over there. It's almost like the woman who t- told 12 different people that she'd been sexually harassed. It looks like there's plenty of confirmation. So right. how could this possibly be wrong? What they don't realize is the same type of people with the same agenda are putting out all those pieces of information. And what is their agenda? To suppress the crimes of progressivism and the Democratic Party, to prevent the left from looking bad. And so even in an official biography, they'll do a biography of Woodrow Wilson, for example. Now, Woodrow Wilson was America's first progressive president. But in terms of being progressive, meaning being committed to progress or being able to see the future, Woodrow Wilson was a complete fool. When, when the automobile first showed up, Woodrow Wilson goes, that should be outlawed. We shouldn't have automobiles. Woodrow Wilson was against the car. <laughs> Come now, on. It wasn't, it wasn't just that he didn't want a car. He thought nobody should have a car. Right now, if you put that in a Woodrow Wilson biography, most people would go, this guy's a complete idiot. Right. So the progressives right. who write those biographies know that. And so they go, you know what? Let's leave that out. We'll let people try to figure that out on their own. And since it's we progressives who are writing all the biographies, they're not likely to know it at all. And if Dinesh says it, we'll say, wait a minute, where is it in the Woodrow Wilson biographies, Dinesh? Even though I have irrefutable sources, I actually have the documents. So I have to dig this stuff up. It's irrefutable. And ultimately, what these historians who are against me, they're the ones putting out the misinformation. They have the agenda. So they all gang up on me and go, no serious historian agrees with you, Dinesh, because all of us have been working so hard to suppress the kind of facts that you're bringing out. It's amazing to me, Dinesh, because you, you really just, uh, you, you, you shined a very bright light on, on this. I had no idea Woodrow Wilson was anti-car, for God's sakes. I just learned something from you. But when we talk about Jim Crow and segregation, the KKK lynchings and, and no Second Amendment rights for blacks, we're talking about the Democrat Party. And they somehow have have exonerated themselves through the media, through music, through Hollywood, through his so-called historians by saying, yeah, but that was before the big switch. And that's the big lie. And whenever anybody brings up the big switch to me, I always say, when did it happen? What specific event was there where the Democrats said, hey, sure, we'll be Republicans now. And the Republicans said, yeah, sure, we'll be Democrats now. And the answer I usually get is, well, it was in the 60s, and you and I have talked about this many times. The switch for black voters was actually in the 20s and 30s when they were made false promises by FDR. So knowing all of that is fact, and and I try to purvey the facts that I've learned from you and and elsewhere, um, the people still believe there was some sort of a big switch, and, and the racist Republicans in the South became racist Democrats. And the reality is, and you really bore this out in your last piece of work, was the less racist the South became, the more Republican it became. And that's verifiable, isn't it? 
Absolutely. If you look at the uh, the racial data, you basically see that racism begins to drop off. Well, it drops off worldwide, but it drops off dramatically in the South starting in the late 1940s. Now, the reason for this is obvious. Once the concentration gaps were open, uh, once the fruits, if you will, the ugly fruits of Hitler's ideology became apparent, racial supremacy became completely discredited. This is, by the way, why when Martin Luther King uh, attacked segregation, there were no segregationists on the other side who go, Martin Luther King, you're such a fool. Here are 12 good arguments for segregation. No one could even say that. Yes, they could put dogs and hoses on Martin Luther King, but they had there was no counter argument because the argument was settled in 1945. So we begin to see racism drop off. But even though it dropped off, the South never moved in the Republican camp until the 80s and 90s. It moved into the Republican camp on the presidential level only in the 80s under Reagan. And let's think of why. Reagan was an anti-communist. Reagan was a patriot. Uh, Reagan was for family values. Reagan was pro-life. So there were all these other reasons having nothing to do with race that swung the politically conservative South into the Reaganite camp. And the South only became fully Republican at the House and Senate level in the 90s. So the 60s have nothing to do with this. And so ultimately, the, the reason the big switch fails is not because there was no switch. Yes, the South did switch the Republican camp. Yes, blacks did switch. But neither side switched because of race. In the case of blacks, it was the economic promises of the New Deal. In the case of the South, it was essentially the Reaganite agenda that brought non-racist Southerners into the Republican camp. It's Dinesh Souza. The new book is out tomorrow, United States of Socialism. And, and Dinesh, the reason why I'm going this way to, to get to George Floyd is what does George Floyd have to do with socialism? What does George Floyd, and his family has said, please stop this. He would not want any of this. Um, what does he have to do with Antifa? What does he have to do with Black Lives Matter, that radical anarchist group? What does he have to do with people protesting in Berlin today? Uh, for God's sakes, Dinesh. How do we get from that man who was horribly mistreated and I believe killed. We'll find out after the end of the court case. I'm glad the, the officer was charged, the former officer. Um, how does that man and the loss of his life a- at all parlay into Antifa, Black Lives Matter, um, protests in, in England and Germany? What are we looking at here? We're looking at an incredible story because for Marx, socialism would come automatically because of the discontent of the working class. Marx said that the working class, the sweaty guy, the foreman on the dock, the guy who spends 15 hours a day on the job, that's the guy Marx cared about. And Marx thought that guy would become so exploited, he would overthrow the system. But that never happened. Working class people are actually fairly conservative. Uh, One economist said that socialism never came to America because of roast beef and apple pie, the ordinary guy when he has a nice house two cars in the backyard uh, and he's got uh, he can go on vacation once a year he's not going to want to revolt against the system he's going to want to join the system so the left has figured this out they've realized that today you can't get a working class guy if you find a white working class guy there's a very good chance you'll find him at the trump rally not in the antifa parade so the left realized we need other types of grievances in ultimately to sow the seeds of social division. This is when they came up with the idea of identity politics. In other words, let's use racial and ethnic divisions. Let's use gender divisions, men versus women, uh, straight versus gay, legal versus illegal. So if you look at the new socialism of the Democrats today, it's not classic uh, Marxian socialism because it's not just the rich against the poor, but it is dividing society many different ways And the objective here is to assemble a coalition of victim groups that together comprises a political majority. That's the Democrats' political strategy. And that's just not Bernie or AOC. That's the mainstream of the Democratic Party. Um, So uh, there we are. I call it identity socialism in the book. And by identity socialism, I just mean a kind of marriage between classic socialism and identity politics. This is why the George Floyd episode, by itself irrelevant, but it's essentially become the vehicle Uh, if you will, the Sarajevo shot in the dark that sets off this wider conflagration. So ultimately, the left is using him and using the legitimate uh, horror over what happened in that one case to generalize and say, this proves not only that the cops are racist, but America's racist, we're structurally racist, we've been that way since 1619, and this is taught in the universities, promulgated in the media, it's the plot of Hollywood movies, so no wonder there's a bunch of people who believe it and ultimately pick up a brick 
and act on it. It is Dinesh D'Souza. The book is United States of Socialism out tomorrow. Make sure you get it. Go to DineshD'Souza.com. Follow him everywhere on social media. So when Bernie and AOC and others say we want Sweden socialism, they're lying. When when they say we want that form of socialism that, that just levels the playing field for the working man, that's not what we see from Antifa and Black Lives Matter and the George Soros funded groups. What we're seeing is a want and a desire to overthrow our way of life. So, I mean, they're really, they're playing the game here of saying what they want and doing something completely different, right? Yeah, because, in, you know, in Venezuela, they have identity socialism. Hugo Chavez said, I'm indigenous. The white people have ruined Venezuela. We're going to cancel Columbus Day. But notice that they never do that in Scandinavia. Scandinavia has no problem with Columbus. Their only problem with Columbus is he wasn't Scandinavian. <laughs> um, but they don't demonize the rich. They don't play this identity politics in the way that it's played here. Um, they don't have this divisive rhetoric. By the way, no, no uh, socialist politician in Norway or Denmark has ever gone from zero to $100 million on a government salary. Right. But that does happen in Venezuela. And that happens here in the United States. It's happened to Gore. It's happened to Obama. Obama, the Clintons, the Bidens, all these guys produce nothing. They can't make an iPhone. They can't start Amazon. But somehow they become fabulously rich by leveraging their government contacts. Why is it that the United States and the way we were formed is what's under attack? We've only been around a little over 200 years. In Mexico, in Central America, South America, they all speak Spanish because Spain conquered them. Um, France did a lot of conquering. The British Empire, for God's sakes, the Roman Empire. Yet for some reason, the United States and our past is the only problem on the planet. Dinesh, why? Is it because we're the most prosperous? Is it jealousy? Why is it that we're the target when clearly our history not only wasn't worse than the history of other lands, but we've made a lot of steps to fix the history here? The the socialist attack is always against two things. On the one side, it's an attack against entrepreneurship, but I don't just mean it's an attack on big companies. It's an attack on the entrepreneurial spirit, the idea of innovation, making something new, um, that forward-looking spirit that has built America, that is the first target of socialist attack. The second target of socialist attack, and this is sort of cultural Marxism, you may say, is the institutions of religion, the family, and private property. Notice that all socialist regimes go beyond economics. Why attack the church? What does that have to do with the working class? Directly nothing. But the, the socialists hate the concept of a moralistic society that sees a sharp dividing line between good and evil, not just as a matter of private conscience, but as a matter of public character. The United States has always gone on moral crusades throughout its history. Uh, the founders, Lincoln, Reagan, saw America as a providential nation. nation. So the left hates this, and, and they want to bring that part of America down with the same venom that they direct against entrepreneurship. So America, it's, it's almost like America was designed to be the classic anti-socialist society. Uh, the other societies in Europe and South America have made accommodations with, so even India. Uh, India, by and large, still has a national-run airline. The socialist spirit is still there, even though there's more capitalism than before, and India is doing better as a result. But America is the only country that you may almost say stood athwart socialism and basically said, take a hike, buddy. And the socialists have never forgotten it, and they're always trying to, and so we are the target because we represent the anti-socialist mindset. It's Dinesh D'Souza. The name of the book is The United States of Socialism. It's out tomorrow everywhere. Normal places. Go and get it. Go to his website, DineshD'Souza.com. Follow him everywhere. Dinesh, I'm frankly out of time, but I've got one more quick one. You've got um, big celebrities, big name celebrities, many, all of whom you would know, that are now collecting money, hundreds of thousands of dollars that they're donating, uh, even over a million now, I believe, that they're donating to help get protesters out of jail. A couple of things are important here. Number one, no protesters are being arrested. That's just not happening. Those who are peaceably protesting by their rights covered by the Constitution are not being locked up. Looters, violent uh, um, uh, rioters are being arrested for good reason. These people, in essence, are pledging their money to get rooter, to get looters and rioters out of out of jail. When in most places, like even Minneapolis, these people are being arrested and then let go. That they don't need any bail anyway. What do you think this is all about? Where they're putting their money, they're high paid in their Hollywood Hills homes, they're behind their Golden Gates. Oh, I've got two hundred thousand that I'll throw your way. As if that's some. It's like saying let them eat cake. What do you think about that? When big media, big Hollywood says, "I'm going to support those who are doing the rioting." 
Well, what it tells you is that the first of all, that these are not marginal characters. They have powerful allies in mayor's offices, sometimes even on the police force, yeah. and yeah. certainly in the Democratic Party and in the media. The second thing is it tells you is that the left is not confident that they can get socialism through persuasion. This is why they go after digital censorship. Let's try to kick everybody else off social media. This is why they, for example, try to destroy people's careers enforce conformity, make the baker bake a cake, and so on. Yeah. This yeah. is also why I think they've decided they need a private army. Look, Hitler decided at one point he needed a private army and he created the brown shirts. Mussolini did, he got the black shirts. These were basically collective armies of, of roaming thugs that were necessary to beat everybody into submission. In Venezuela, they have these colectivos. Debbie's told you about them. Yes. Uh, they're essentially a militarized group that goes around in motorcycles and they carry exactly the same equipment as Antifa, cement blocks and baseball bats. That's their two weapons of choice, just like here. So the Democrats need a privatized, militarized, paramilitary force, and they've decided it's Antifa. That's why they protect them. Now, they can't say that. They can't say we need our own gangs to roam the streets and beat the small business guys. into. So they've got to pretend like they're fighting fascists. Fight. Amazing. But in fact, the guys they're fighting have nothing to do with George Floyd. Some business guy or some guy manager at Target, really, did he do it? Is that the reason you're going in and desecrating that place or burning a church in Washington, D.C.? No, it's a pretext. And what's scary is that there is clearly now a need in high places to subsidize this kind of thing. So the Hollywood people know exactly what they're doing. They, they are in with this agenda and they are ultimately its financiers. The United States of Socialism out tomorrow. Dinesh D'Souza is the author. Check out every one of his movies. If you want a historical background based on fact, go see what he's done and read what he's written. Dinesh, thanks a million. Appreciate you. My pleasure. All right, back after this on the Joe Pag Show. Stay right here.